Okay, so I had a DM on Instagram, and the question was about balls hit directly over your head. Now that's gonna happen, it happens a lot. If you're playing regular depth or a little bit in, a ball's gonna get hit over your head, especially with a fence. Doesn't matter which depth you're playing, it's gonna get hit over your head. So if it's hit directly over your head, the question was, how do I know which way to turn? The answer to that is, turn to your favorite side. It's directly over your head. So for me, my favorite side was to drop step and go left directly over my head. You could go right if you want, but the point is the ball's gonna be slightly to one shoulder and it's too hard to tell right away. But if it's a rocket over your head, the main thing you have to do is turn and sprint with your head down to try to gain ground. If you turn and sprint right away, you're gonna give yourself an opportunity to make an adjustment because you're getting to the spot faster. But if you're looking up the entire time, it's slower getting to the spot so it's going to take longer and harder to make an adjustment. So if the balls hit over your head, turn to your favorite side, which is my take on it. Sprint, look up, and if you're there, you're there. If you're not, put your head back down and keep going. Now, another question that I had in my DM was, I feel as though if I take my head off of it and I look up, the ball's already too close to me, I can't make the catch. As in, you looked up and it's right on top of you. That's something you have to learn right off of the bat. So you have to take quality reps and read the, the ball off of the bat because you'll be able to tell right away if, if a ball's hit softly, you probably don't need to take your eye off of it. The whole reason you take your eye off of the ball is because it's so far away from you that you need to just focus on gaining ground and not focusing on where the ball is. So right away when you're in your stance and you see that ball hit, you can tell off the bat if it's gonna be just softly over your head to where you can turn, look up and go get it. When it's a line shot, you just have to worry about booking it across the field. And that just comes with repetition, as I said in one of my blog posts. You just keep on hammering out the reps, and your instinct off the back gets better. So here's a drill you could do for working on balls over your head. It's very simple. You just get a partner, and you have them throw balls to you. Take an object, like something small, simple, like your hat. Set it about 20, 30 yards out. And then all you're gonna do from here is get in your ready position. And when you're ready, you turn and sprint. So you, in your mind's eye, imagine a ball getting hit right over your head. You drop step to your favorite side or whichever one you're comfortable with, turn and go, take off and book it. Now your partner's gonna throw the ball and you can adjust the hat based on your speed or you know where you wanna be challenged. Your partner's gonna throw the ball. Once it's in the air, he'll say ball, right? He'll let you know that that you know the ball's in the air and you can look up and find it. So you turn and sprint, no say ball, and you gotta throw it to the area of the head. So it's just the idea of sprinting directly over your shoulder and trying to get a ball that's hit right over your head. And that that kind of teaches you how to make adjustments based on your speed and how to break down and gather yourself. Um, sometimes you gotta make an awkward catch over your head. Sometimes you have time to get to it here or even get behind it and come through it. But you won't really know until you get those different looks. So. Just setting up something simple like this is a good way to start with balls directly over your head. All right, I want to talk a little bit about finding the fence on a ball that's hit high in the air. So when the ball's hit high, you don't need to follow it the whole way, right? You got to worry about your safety when you're getting near the sidelines. And hopefully if you have good teammates, good guys in the bullpen, they let you know that the fence is coming. But ideally when a ball's high and it's hanging up there, what you want to do is find the fence and then retrieve the ball so that you don't go sprinting into the fence and falling over and busting your head open pretty much. So let's say I'm a third baseman or fir first baseman. If the ball's hit high, popped up, maybe come and foul, what you want to do when you're getting over this area, you have a lot of time since it's in the air. You want to sprint, find the fence, and then straddle it and go get the ball, okay? It's like, if you're going like this the whole way, you might get scared, you might feel like the fence is coming up on you, and a lot of time that, that uh, scares guys away from making the catch because they think they're about to hit the fence. You take that out of the picture right away, you get to the fence, make the catch. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the next thing is uh, if you're an outfielder and you're going back to the fence, let's say the ball's hit over your head, you're in right field, left field, center field, and it's all the way to the warning track. If it's hanging up there and you have time, Obviously, you don't always have time. It could be a hard hit ball. You might slam it in the fence. Those things happen. But if you have time and the ball's hanging up there, sprint to the fence and make the catch. Because that saves you, again, a lot of time of being scared of where the fence is. Because you know, you get that feeling when you're nearing the warning track, like, 
oh, oh, okay, the fence is coming, the fence is coming. And a lot of times you're nowhere near the fence, and other times you're right on top of it. So the best thing to do when you hit that warning track is find the wall, turn and make the grab. And if it is going over the fence, now you know where you are, you can make that attempt to jump and go get it. 